On today's show, two companies taking on the challenge of monetizing carrier Wi-Fi, our interviews with Global Reach and Front Porch at this year's edition of Mobile World Congress are coming up right after this short message. All right, welcome back, everybody. My name is Klaus Hatting, and this is Wi-Fi Now TV once again with yet another episode. And we're going to share with you a couple of interviews we did with uh, a couple of leading Wi-Fi monetization companies at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona in just a moment. That's going to be great. Before I go ahead and do that, I want to uh, make just this uh, usual announcement of Wi-Fi Now, the conference which is coming up in Washington, D.C., of course, on April 19th to 21st. We've got a fantastic program. If you're interested in joining us, go to wifinowevents.com slash USA. If you have any questions, drop me a line at klaus at wifinowevents.com. I'm happy to answer your questions about that. And please make, make plans to join us if you're in any way interested in Wi-Fi, working with Wi-Fi, that is the one Wi-Fi event this year that you're not going to want to miss. So that's coming up in D.C. next month. Now, for our segments this week, I have uh, for you a couple of interviews we did at the Mobile World Congress uh, about, I guess, about a month ago. We caught up with, first of all, with the CEO and CTO of Global Reach Technologies, Global Reach is right now one of a, the few companies in the world providing hotspot 2.0 based roaming services and seamless connectivity. Here's what Dave Williamson, the CEO of Global Reach, and his CTO, Chris Spencer, had to say. Enjoy the interview. All right, I'm here at the Mobile World Congress with another great Wi Fi company. It's Global Reach, it's a UK based company working worldwide. And I'm here with Mark Williamson, CEO of Global Reach, and Chris Spencer, CTO of Global Reach. First of all, Mark, give us the short overview of Global Reach. What is it that you're working on? Sure, so uh, we provide cloud based uh, AAA service with capital portable and onboarding solutions, hotspot 2.0. Um, we provide it mainly to service providers, operators uh, around the world, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, times are good. Right. Really, really busy. So, for a carrier, any kind of carrier really that wants to, a, a carrier Wi-Fi service, you provide the, the shall we say, the, the managed service the infrastructure that was yeah. behind that. Right? So it's the over-the-top service. It's uh, the interaction with the consumer, whether it's. Uh, the service provider's customer or their customer's customer. We create a, we help those service providers build their service using our platform in the cloud. Um, and we find our interactions start either in the consumer space, uh, providing to service providers, customers, or to their enterprise customers and, and out through a managed service provider. But what they're all really starting to look at to us for is, is a single platform to manage all these different interactions online. And now we're starting to see it move into the uh, the roaming areas with Hotspot 2.0. Let's talk a little bit about Hotspot 2.0 because we got Chris Spencer, CTO of uh, Global Reach here with us, and I know that's your baby, Chris. Tell us about Hotspot 2.0, and first of all, a little bit about what it's about, because I, I still think that there, there are people out there that don't know what it's about. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, Hotspot 2 is one of my passions, the, the, the seamless cellular experience that we um, have every day when we step off a plane in a different country and our phone literally just connects for us. We get a nice text message and you know, from our carrier and off we go. And the same kind of thing is happening in Wi-Fi. So not only is it the seamless connectivity, it's also the security aspect that plays a big, big part of that. With open networks, we're all aware of, you know, there are issues and there are things and uh, those kind of things. But with the secure side, obviously, we're guaranteeing that the access point we're connecting to is one that is authorised for me to share my carrier credentials with to allow me access to that location. So I am very, very passionate about it. Hotspot TV, so security, seamless connectivity, but also roaming, of course, right? And I know you guys yeah. are working on, I have been for a while, have provided the technology behind City Wi-Fi networks in San Jose and San Francisco. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about that. That's still ongoing, right? You're That's still doing that. still, still ongoing. And um, in fact, the uh, WBA that was held there um, 
in San Jose literally a few months ago, uh, was using uh, our back end platform to allow those carriers to actually come there and see the experience for themselves. Because mm. that's one of the things, you know, carriers have got to get used to this technology. It's there, it's, it's very, very early days, and there's still a long way we can go within the industry to get this right. Uh, but the experience is now starting to stack up and really, really nice. With the launch of Google Marshmallow, for example, the provisioning process is just so nice. It's user friendly now. It's not having yes. to, you know, it, it's not having to download files and move them around. It can have to be managed very, very nice by the carrier. So the carrier now has that choice and that connectivity solution that they can use to add in extra levels of uh, where they don't have connectivity or where people are roaming to different countries and those. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that point because when you do speak to carriers, one of the hardest things in Wi-Fi, they all say this, is to get people provisioned on the network. Uh, what is it like right now, right now with your solution? What, what needs to be done? Are there still challenges in that? I believe there still are challenges, uh, but we've come such a long, long way in a very, very short period of time. Previously, iOS was a nice, easy way of provisioning uh, an Apple device for a carrier. Uh, they've had issues with... Uh, Android previously because of the drawbacks of provisioning. Again, since Marshmallow, they now have a choice so they can take you to their carrier's website, you can log in with your carrier's credentials and be offered the choice to provision your phone for roaming when I'm going abroad or when I'm uh, going to a new city or something like that. Is the future bright for Hotspot 2.0? I know you guys are, are counting on it. Well, uh, yeah, I believe it is. I think. Uh, we're starting to see it in, in the projects like San Francisco, San Jose, where you know there's a real creativity to it. But we're now seeing other cities starting to really look at secure public Wi-Fi when they when they present it in their name. And we're seeing more and more cities around the world. We run some in the UK, there's others in the US starting to see that. And then slowly as it starts to all all link up, I think that will build the momentum. And city Wi-Fi is really kind of a nearly a, I wouldn't say grassroots movement, but it's it's a big movement and we don't always hear about all the city Wi-Fi numbers that go up there. Is that also your sense that there's a lot of city Wi-Fi going up there? Yeah, we're seeing more and more of it everywhere. Um, it used to be what was the business model for, uh, for launching a city Wi-Fi. Now, cities are launching it because they need to. They need to include their citizens. They need to give it for visitors. Um, and we're starting to see more and more of that happening. And I think, as we see the roaming going across them, it's easier to join, it's less cumbersome, it's more seamless, so therefore you carry on with the value as you move across all these networks. Mark and Chris, it's great to have you, and it's a pleasure to speak to you. We're also going to see you in DC at the Wi-Fi Now conference, yeah. of course. Yes. And, yes. And thank you so much. We are as well. Yeah, yeah. Have a great con Congress. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that interview. We're a little bit sorry that the sound is not that great on that interview, but I hope you, hope you caught everything. Now, Global Reach, of course, is not the only company uh, working on providing a way for carriers to monetize Wi-Fi. Also at the Mobile World Congress this year, we met with Carl Daly of Front Porch. Front Porch uh, provides in-browser injection technology. And they're already working closely with a number of big U.S. cable operators. Here is a VP of North American Sales, Carl Daly of Front Porch, explaining what that's all about. All right, I'm here at the Mobile World Congress with Front Porch, and this is Carl Daly of Front Porch. He's VP of Sales, North America. That's right. And Carl, just tell us a little bit about uh, what Front Porch does as a company. Yeah, so since 1998, we've given internet service providers the ability to take any content or message they want, send it directly to the users. So in the Wi-Fi environment, we're giving Wi-Fi operators of any Wi-Fi network deployed anywhere, whether it's a venue or a carrier grade Wi-Fi network, to take any content or message they want, whether monetizable advertising or their own customer service messaging or any sort of relationship branding they want to do, and send it directly to any user that's attached to that Wi-Fi network anywhere they surf on the web. Right, so it's really about engaging the consumer, right? Correct. And not least, monetizing the Wi-Fi networks that are there. And as we all know, monetizing Wi-Fi has been a challenge. But you really want to be helping in solving that, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a couple ways you can actually monetize and our product facilitates this. One is for the direct advertisements and brands that are shown. And for example, this person is surfing to a website, it happens to be to Apple's website. This is our product that lets the Wi-Fi operator create different buttons and different content spaces that they can populate with anything they want. 
It could be third party advertising, it could be first party advertising. If it's venue related, it could be something specific to the venue. So there's lots of different opportunities that people had to take advantage of our communication and user experiences to monetize their Wi-Fi network. Uh -huh, and you're already working, uh, obviously, in the U.S. with the big cable Wi-Fi lines, which is basically all the big uh, MSOs in America? Yeah, we've been really fortunate. We've picked up all the major MSOs, cable companies, yeah, the MSO Wi-Fi alliance, including Comcast, Cox, Time Warner, Cablevision, and Bright House. And so our products is actually showing their content in tens of millions of hotspots all over North America. And you do stadiums as well. For example. Exactly, we've done a lot of venue space as well yeah. to provide contextual experiences for basically allowing the, uh, the guests when they arrive at the venues and the stadiums to buy more product there or take advantage of the free Wi-Fi. So Carl, are you guys active on this side of the Atlantic or elsewhere on the world? I know you're very well established in the States. We're, just, uh, we're, we're starting to get more active in Europe and largely to your show actually. Oh, good. The last yeah. show we were at with you, we had created a couple of great relationships and I think we're going to go to act of trial within the next month or so with several very enticing prospects. So how do you find the market responding to this? Because it's also somewhat of a subject of controversy that you give people access to through their browser, through the internet, and then present them with various uh, ad content and so forth, and consumer engagement content. Yeah. Some people find that, uh, some, some consumers might not react to that in the right way, so to speak. How are you dealing with that challenge? So the beautiful thing about our product is, again, the content can give the consumer choices based upon what the operator wants to do. So the operator can immediately, using our yeah. solution, say, do you want to choose between a free experience or a paid experience? If you want to choose a paid experience, you can click on one of these buttons, purchase as much time as you want, you don't have to see advertisements unless you want to, or you can click on this button, a different button, and you can receive advertisements and serve for free. So it's about giving consumers choice, Right. and if consumers have choice, then they can't complain and they're actually enjoying the experience that they choose themselves. Right. So it's opt-in, basically. It's, which is, this is, this is the it's opt-in and with choice. Yeah, right. And we give the, the flexibility mm -hmm. to the operator to make sure that those users are always going to be perfectly satisfied with the content they receive, mm -hmm. and that way they're going to come back and enjoy those services again. And how are you finding Mobile World Congress this year? I'm thrilled with this show. <laughs> okay. No yeah, Good. absolutely thrilled. We've had a lot of great traffic, a lot of great prospects. We've been uh -huh. able to touch base with a lot of great customers. Uh -huh. It's been a good show. Maybe the second best show next year. Oh, really? Okay. They've got to work on it. They've got to work on a little bit. You know, they're not quite as big as you. No, it's true. They're it's working true. on it. Yeah. What can you do? Yeah. Give them a few years and might catch up. Probably yeah, not. Exactly. Okay. No, it's been a, a real pleasure being here for sure. Well, it's great stuff. And thank you. Enjoy the rest of the Congress. And we'll see you in D.C., by the way. We Call certainly will. And we'll see you there. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody, that's what we had for this week's show. We'll be back uh, a little bit later with uh, probably in about a couple of episodes time with more uh, from Mobile World Congress. We've got lots more interviews to share with you, lots more information. Next week specifically, I'll be talking to James Chen of Quantena. Quantena is one of, uh, excuse me, the leaders in high performance Wi-Fi chipsets that use high order MIMO technology and they're doing tremendous amount of great work in that space, boosting Wi-Fi performance. So we'll be talking to uh, Quantana next week. So that's it for today's show. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week for another episode of Wi-Fi Now. Wi-Fi Now is a production of RCR TV News. To suggest a show topic or to learn more about Wi-Fi Now events, you can reach Klaus Heading at klaus at headingconsulting.com. To find out more about Wi-Fi Now and all things wireless, visit rcrwireless.com.